Muflihun, the successful. The beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah is telling us about the successful. The end of Surah Al-Imran, as Hafid Handel cited, Ya ayyu al-ladhina amanu sbiru, wa sabiru, wa rabitu, wattaqu allaha la'allakum tuflihun. Subhanallah. The end of Surah Al-Imran is a confirmation of the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah said, فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Turn your head to Al-Masjid Al-Haram, meaning the Kaaba. At that time, no doubt, the Kaaba was surrounded by idols. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is from ever and forever. In Surah Al-Imran, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ You will never ever achieve righteousness. حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ It's not just about spending, but until you spend from the most dearest wealth to you. The most dearest wealth to you, you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we request praises and blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept what has passed of our month thus far and to bless us during the third night of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we finished the first part of the night. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, last night we did a quick overview of Surah Al-Baqarah and what will make you understand what Surah Al-Baqarah is, subhanallah. Given that Surah Al-Baqarah is one of those surahs that despite the time you give it, you can never give it its haqq, I think it's only appropriate that we quickly summarize what we discussed yesterday. In brief, we discussed and mentioned that one third of the surah discusses the reality of Banu Israel. And those who received Allah's anger as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. And we highlighted that some of the scholars of Tafsir have said that given the portion dedicated to the Jews in Surah Al-Baqarah, and the portion dedicated to the Christians in Surah Al-Imran, it is as if Surah Al-Baqarah is the tafsir of Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim. And Surah Al-Imran is the tafsir of Walad Dalin. Given that Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim refers to Banu Israel, those who Allah blessed with knowledge, but they didn't put that knowledge into practice. And al dalin refers to the followers of Isa, those who innovated worship without evidence and without knowledge. We also discussed how the surah takes us through a transition across almost three ajza or portions of the Qur'an. It takes us through this transition. For a large part, it addresses the realities of Banu Israel, the followers of Musa. And then it transitions into following or into discussing the narratives and the necessary matters pertaining to the followers of the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the Qur'an at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. And some of the scholars of Tafsir have said when we say إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Surat Al-Mustaqim here, the straight path refers to the Qur'an. And this transition happens very eloquently. Because between discussing the narrative of Banu Israel and then the narratives of the people of the Qur'an, it's a transition, but Allah places within the transition a transition. By mentioning, by mentioning to us the prophets that we share from the prophets and messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. And then mentioning to us matters of the qibla, which was shared at the beginning, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the wish of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a thought that surfaced time and time again in the heart of the messenger. Something he didn't speak openly about, but Allah saw it in his heart, and Allah granted it to him, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ Allah says, we have seen your constant turning to the heavens for that matter that is in your heart. That matter to have a qibla that is unique to the only people who support Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Turn your head to Al-Masjid Al-Haram, meaning the Kaaba. At that time, no doubt, the Kaaba was surrounded by idols. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is from ever and forever. And it was in the knowledge of Allah that a day will come when those idols will be removed from around the Kaaba. And the Kaaba will only stand for monotheism and the worship of one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Qibla changed and Allah teaches this at the beginning of the second Jews. And thereafter, Allah pours upon the Ummah the legislation pertaining to the Ummah. Allah pours upon us the breath, the breath and the length of the legislation of Islam in Surah Al-Baqarah. And if I can summarize much of what we heard yesterday, Allah taught us legislation pertaining to the Salah, and then Zakah, and then the fulfillment of one's promises, and then physical retribution or Qisas, 
and then fasting and i'tikaf and rules about bribery and corruption or the rules pertaining to them rules pertaining to the crescent the new moon the rules pertaining to war the rules pertaining to the hajj the rules pertaining to the sacred months the rules pertaining to or the legislation regarding alcohol and gambling matters pertaining to the orphans marriage divorce khula fostering idda the waiting period of a female if she loses a husband and then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went on to discuss matters pertaining to lending and then ultimately riba and that denoted the end of uh, the portion related to legislation in Surah Al-Baqarah and then Allah closed it by tying its end to its beginning when Allah revealed to us Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard Subhanallah The heaviness of legislation that fills Surah Al-Baqarah is something attested to by the Sahaba Subhanallah In a report Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an and some say Ibn Umar, his son they spend several years studying Surah Al-Baqarah, memorizing it and its meanings. And when they finished, they slaughtered a camel in a show of gratitude and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some would call it Sinam al-Quran, the camel hump of the Quran, the height of the Quran. And some would say it is a surah that is difficult to achieve. To memorize it is hard. But once you memorize it to comprehend its rulings and meanings, is super hard subhanallah it's filled with so much and it needs years of traversing and traveling through surah al-baqarah to appreciate the complexity and the dimension of surah al-baqarah yesterday i didn't share with you the qawaid al-kulliyah the universal principles that we learn in the books of fiqh islamic jurisprudence and usul al-fiqh jurisprudence methodology that are implanted deep within surah al-baqarah and almost from its beginning when allah says ma fil ardi jami'a, that it is allah who created for you everything on earth and the scholars use this verse as evidence al -aslu fil -ashya al -ibaha, that from the outset everything which is not worship is permissible this is just one example i didn't share this with you yesterday then it's filled with so many stories. In fact, there's nine famous stories in Surah Al-Baqarah. And our Imams, one after the other, through the last two nights, went through them. From the outset, Allah teaches us about the story of Adam alayhi salam. And then Musa alayhi salam and Banu Israel in more than a third or around a third of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then we have the story of Harut and Marut. And then the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the building of the Kaaba. And then the event of the changing of the Qibla. And then the story of Talut and Jalut. And then the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Namrud or Namrad in the English language. The person who ruled Babylon and a vast area around it. It is said that Namrud or Namrad, he had a dominion that spanned the breadth and width of the dominion of Dhul Qarnayn. And we read about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al-Kahf and his journeys to the east and the west and the north. He went through, through these lands without any borders because he ruled over these lands. Allah tells us about the story of the man who passed through one village. Um, and that is in Surah, oh sorry, in verse 259 in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah also tells us about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the bird when he had this conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he asked Allah to show him how Allah gives life. And Allah said to him, oh Ibrahim, do you not believe that I give life? He said, of course I believe my Lord, but I'm intrigued. I just want to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that story as well. So that is Surah Al-Baqarah in really a nutshell. Then we began Surah Al-Imran and we progressed with Surah Al-Imran to the end. And what will make you understand Surah Al-Imran? The third Surah in our Mus'haf, the second largest Surah after Surah Al-Baqarah, a Surah that consists of 200 verses. How many verses does Surah Al-Baqarah consist of? What did we say? 286. 200 verses in Surah Al-Imran. And also it is a Madani Surah and it is said that it was revealed after Surah Al-Anfal in terms of the order of revelation pertaining to the surahs. Now, before we move into some particulars pertaining to Surah Al-Imran, let me share with you some similarities between Surah Al-Imran and Surah Al-Baqarah because earlier I introduced to you this topic of At-Tanasub, this topic of the um, um, relationship between the verses of the Quran, the relationship between the surahs of the Quran. And we see many relationships between the two surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. I mean, just today from the readings of the Imam, we saw mention about Hajj and mention about Riba and mention about 
at the opening of the fourth juz, bir, the idea of spending. And remember at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah spoke about those who spend. And Allah then built upon that idea throughout Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Imran, You will never ever achieve righteousness. It's not just about spending, but until you spend from the most dearest wealth to you. The most dearest wealth to you, you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see these similarities. But also, if we zoom in a little bit closer, we see that Surah Al-Imran, it begins with huruf al-muqatta'at, the disjointed letters, alif, lam, mim. And Surah Al-Baqarah also begins with the disjointed letters, alif, lam, mim. And scholars have tried to understand the meaning of alif, lam, mim, or alif, lam, ra. And I discuss this in some detail in my new book that's coming out, or it's already come out, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, because that particular surah starts with the disjointed letters as well. Alif, Lam, Ra. But if I can summarize the five famous views pertaining to these disjointed letters. It is, it is a challenge from Allah to those receiving the Quran. To the Quraysh who are antagonistic to the Quran. Even though the Quran was revealed in their language. Bilisanin Arabiyyim Mubin. It was revealed in a clear Arabic language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting the surah by revealing letters, letters from their alphabet and then challenging them that this is the Quran in letters from your alphabet but you will never ever produce even a verse like it subhanallah and that's why we if you notice and when the imams read throughout Ramadan take note whenever there's a disjointed letter or in most surahs that begin with a disjointed letter Allah will be will mention the kitab will mention the Quran will mention revelation alif lam mim dhalik al kitab alif lam mim Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum nazzala Allah mentions that he revealed the book Yaseen Wal Quran Al Hakim. See a disjointed letters here, Allah mentions the Quran. Right? So this has been used by evidence by the scholars to denote the wisdom behind these disjointed letters. So the two surahs share this similarity. They both start with the disjointed letters. Also, we see that in Surah Al Baqarah, Allah he reveals to us. The attitude of the people who received revelation. And we also see this in Surah Al-Imran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, it was the believers versus the disbelievers and how they received the guidance. In Surah Al-Imran, it's referring to the people who have pure hearts and the people who have impure hearts and how they receive the guidance. For at the opening of Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa tells us about those who have this desire to follow their desires. They have this illness to follow their whims and fancies and what they do with the revelation. I will speak about it just now when we go into um, some of the particular verses in, in Surah Al-Imran. Also, we see between the two surahs, the similarity between the story of the creation of Adam in Surah Al-Baqarah in Surah Al-Imran, Allah tells us about the story of the creation of Isa alayhi salam. And he says the creation of Isa is similar to the creation of Adam. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did we say in Surah Al-Imran? It's predominantly dealing with the narrative of who? The Christians. The followers of Isa alayhi salam. We see the creation of Isa alayhi salam being mentioned in Al-Imran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Adam alayhi salam. And Allah mentions to us the similarities between the creation of both. So this is another relationship between the two surahs. Relationship number three. We see, the challenge, we, we see a challenging happening in um, both surahs regarding the narratives of the people of the book. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, we saw an extensive challenge against the narratives of Banu Israel. And we discussed this yesterday. In Surah Al-Imran, we see a challenge. But not in a lengthy manner, like we saw in Surah Al-Baqarah. But we see the Quran challenging the narratives of the Christians. Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, lima takfuruna bi ayatillah wa antum tashhadun. O people of the book, why are you denying the, the revelation? The verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing, but you are witnesses in actual fact to the reality. Ya ahl al kitab, lima talbisun al haqqa bil batil is challenging them. That, oh people of the book, why are you dressing the truth with falsehood? It's not as if they were a people who didn't receive a messenger before. It's not as if Isa didn't teach them anything. It's not as if they didn't have the New Testament with them. So we see the Quran challenging them 
the, and their narratives as the Quran challenged the Jews and their narratives in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then also we see the similarity of dua, subhanAllah. And I had to add this in because subhanAllah we ended with the duas today. And this is something that only occurred to me today, subhanAllah. That both Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, they both end with the duas. <laughs> in Surah Al-Baqarah, Towards the end, the believers are saying, "Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhda'ana. Rabbana wa la tuhmil alina isran kama hamaltahu ala aladina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhmilna ma la taqatla nabi." Right? The Allah mentions these du'as that the believers are saying. And remember, we said that Surah Al-Baqarah is a is a journey of growth. So from these du'as, you get the impression that these are du'as of people who are new in faith. They're new in faith. They're receiving the legislation. The legislation is so much. As we see in Surah Al-Baqarah, it's pouring down like a thunderstorm upon the hearts of the believers who have submitted to the will of Allah. So they turn to Allah and say, لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا O our Lord, if we, please don't hold us accountable if we forget or if we make a mistake in trying to implement what you've revealed to us. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا Ya Allah, don't hold us accountable like you held the people before accountable. Then we say, <laughs> Uh, 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 oh Allah, do not reveal to us that which is beyond our ability to manage. Pardon us, and forgive us, and shower your mercy upon us. You are our guide. We see these du'as at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Imran, subhanAllah, if you ponder over the, the du'as, Hafidh, Hamdala uh, read, uh, at the end of the Taraweeh today, subhanAllah, if you ponder over the du'as, you see that these are the du'as of the people of Iman. Meaning the people who are established in the deen. Not the people who are new in the deen and they're trying to adopt many of the legislations that have been revealed. These are people who are established. Rabbana, innaka man tudkhilin nara faqad akhzayta. That, oh, our Lord, indeed the one who you place into the hellfire, you have disgraced him. Wa ma lidhalimina min ansar, and the oppressors have no helpers. Rabbana, oh, our Lord, innana sami'na munadi an yunadi lil imani an aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna. Oh, our Lord, indeed, we heard a caller calling to believe in you, and we believed. رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرُ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا Oh Allah, because we, we believed, we're practicing, we're in it. Forgive our sins. وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا And uh, expiate our, uh, our, our slips and our falls. وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ And cause us to die with the righteous, those who we are in their footsteps trying to emulate. Subhanallah. We see this at the end of uh, Surah Al-Imran. So here we have another relationship. Last but not least, Subhanallah, the idea of Falah. Subhanallah. We have this relationship between Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran in terms of this idea of success. And this confirmation that success is for the believers. For Surah Al-Baqarah starts with the message of success. Subhanallah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَلِّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says, Allah says, those who believe in the unseen and they pray their salah and they give their zakah and they die upon iman, they are the ones who are upon the guidance of their Lord and they are the ones who are muflihun, muflihun, the successful. The beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah is telling us about the successful. The end of Surah Al-Imran is Hafid Handala cited, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. Subhanallah. The end of Surah Al-Imran is a confirmation of the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, O oh, people of belief, be patient, be persistent, uh, isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu and be stationed, wa attaqullaha and be righteous, la'allakum tuflihun. Perhaps so you will be from the successful. So that you will be from the successful, subhanAllah. So this ayah of falah is there clearly, which teaches us that Surah Al-Imran is building on the growth that was given to us in Surah Al-Baqarah. And this is the journey of the Qur'an. We introduce to Allah and then we grow from what we know and the Qur'an grows us and grows us and grows us. And that is why the Qur'an, the final testament, the timeless miracle will always be the book that keeps giving. Whenever you read it, you don't read it as if it's a book that I've read. You always read it as if it's a book that you haven't read because you're waiting for the next enlightenment that's going to be thrown at you from the barakah and blessings of the Qur'an. Now in terms of Surah Al-Imran, we mentioned many key topics of Surah Al-Baqarah. Al-Imran has two key topics and I'm distilling the topics here. If I distill all the subtopics into the main topics, we have two key 
uh, topical discussions here or genres of discussions here. Number one, verses related to aqidah. And number is which is Islamic belief. And number two, verses related to at tashari'ah or Islamic legislation. We see this in Surah Al Imran. In terms of legislation, then we find legislation pertaining to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Nubuwa, establishing the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the prophet after Isa alayhi salam, the truthfulness of the Quran. And absolutely, you need to believe in the truthfulness of the Quran. Otherwise, how will you believe in the unseen or that the messenger is indeed the messenger? The only, the fact that the only religion accepted by Allah is Islam. In the deen, in the Allah al-Islam. The only religion accepted by Allah is, is Islam. Islam Allah will not accept any religion from you except Islam. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes in Al-Imran. Then Allah debunks or verses related to Aqeedah. Through these verses, he, de he debunks the misconceptions in the belief of the Christians. And he reveals the reality of Isa alayhi salam. And debunks the misconceptions and the ill beliefs of the Christians regarding their aqeedah, their belief regarding Isa alayhi salam. In fact, we can actually say, and Allah knows best, but just from listening to the verses that we, re we, we heard in the Taraweeh, that at least half of Surah Al-Imran is dedicated to these last two points, debunking the misconceptions of the Christians and debunking the misconceptions regarding Isa alayhi salam and affirming the reality of Isa alayhi salam. You can say at least half of uh, Al-Imran is dedicated to this. So that's to do with aqeedah and belief. Then we said we have tashri' and legislation. And like I said earlier, we heard the verses about hajj. We heard verses about the riba. We heard verses about zakah. We also heard verses about jihad. And we heard the story of Uhud and part of the story of Badr. And Surah Al-Anfal also mentions to us Badr. And as we said, some of the scholars have said that Surah Al-Imran was revealed after Anfal. So we have Badr mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرِ Allah mentions Badr also in, in Surah Al-Imran. But he also mentions Uhud. And I dedicated the khutbah from this member um, after, the, after October the 8th about the verses from Uhud that can help us deal with the tragedy of our time, the events of Gaza. For those who missed it, inshallah, you can check the Darul Salam YouTube channel. Then in terms of the reflections, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, very quickly, I am looking at the clock, I do have 10 minutes. Regarding the reflections from Surah Al Imran, then as the Imams recited this evening, I mean, there was so much, wallahi. I was thinking, what should I add? What should I leave? What should I add? What should I leave? You know, the masjid is saying, you only have X amount of time, right? Because obviously the school and so on and so forth. Um, and Allah forgive us, because subhanAllah, we can't give these ayat, it's haq, right? What we say, oh Allah, accept from us what we can give. And as the Arabic saying goes, ma la yudrak kulluhu la yudrak jullu. If you can't cover something in its entirety, then don't leave it out in its entirety. Take what you can, right? But if I may, if I may, what stood out for me from Surah Al-Imran, and not just tonight, but from through previous readings of Surah Al-Imran, is how the Surah is positioned to maintain istiqamah. Subhanallah, steadfastness. Steadfastness is a big theme of Surah Al-Imran. If you're looking for the principles to bring istiqamah in your life, you'll find it in Surah Al-Imran. If you're looking for the principles to maintain istiqamah in your life, You'll find it in Surah Al-Imran. When they were reading, I think I pulled out five principles to bring istiqamah and four principles to maintain istiqamah. And maybe I will write about that uh, on, on a blog one day, inshallah. But just as they were reading, you could see, subhanallah, this is a lesson towards bringing it in your life. This is another one. This is another one. This one is to maintain it. If you have it, how to maintain it? Subhanallah, you see it throughout the surah. And it, it has this circular theme, meaning it starts and Allah brings us back to it in the middle of the surah. Then it, it moves on and Allah brings us back to it at the end of the surah. And let me try and, and, and uh, summarize it for you uh, and unpackage uh, what I'm saying for you. And then perhaps we can repackage and then you understand what I'm saying. If you heard carefully, when the Imams were reciting this evening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He taught us the disease that takes istiqamah away from us. What takes us away from steadfastness into, into being lost? Hmm? And that is a sickness. That sickness is known as the sickness of doubt or the sickness of misconceptions. See, there's two sicknesses of the heart that lead to sin and misguidance. The sickness of following your desires 
الشهوة مرض الشهوة and the sickness of following misconception doubts doubts whereby you want to follow but you've misunderstood what was being said and you take an interpretation that suits your whims and fancies sometimes without even realizing that can be a form of cognitive dissonance but this takes us away when people sin it's either they know that they're doing wrong but they can't help themselves they have a desire to do the sin or there's people who sin and they think they're not doing anything wrong that's a misconception that is a doubt and a misconception surah al imran it deals with misconceptions because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that the antidote, the medicine for both sicknesses, the sickness of doubt and the sickness of misconceptions is ilm, is knowledge. And that's why the first words Allah revealed was iqra, read and learn. And the first thing he told us to learn about, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Go learn about Allah. Learn and this will help you get away from your desires because now you know who your Lord is and you should love Him and fear His punishment and have hope in His mercy. We discussed that in Surah Al-Fatiha. But then also, if you have knowledge, it pushes back misconceptions, the wrong understanding of the verses. Today we see people, they, with sincerity, create atrocities. Murder even, with sincerity. And they justified using verses from the Quran and a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Subhanallah. This is, this is the sickness of misconceptions. And in my contemplation, the sickness of misconception is worse than the sickness of doubts. When you have a doubt, sorry, the sickness of doubts and misconceptions is worse than the sicknesses of following your desires. When you follow your desires, you follow it, but you know you're doing wrong, so there's an element of guilt. But when you do wrong thinking you're right, this is the best friend for shaitan. Because you do it believing in the cause. And nobody seeks medical attention if they don't know that they're sick. If you think you know, but you don't know, you won't listen to anybody. Surah Al Imran is aiding us in this. You find the topic of ilm huge, big in Surah Al Imran. And of course, it begins with discussing Alif Lam Mim, and then Allah tells us about the revelation of the Quran. Allah also tells us He revealed the Torah and the Injil, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then, subhanAllah, to be knowledgeable, what do we need? Dua, we have to ask from Allah, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِذْنِي عِلْمَا Oh Allah, increase us in knowledge and we need patience. As we see in the story of Musa alayhi salam. When Allah sent Musa on a journey to find Khidr, it was a journey to seek knowledge. What did Musa say? He said, لَنْ أَبْرَحْ I won't rest. حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنَ Until I get to where the two seas meet. Because Allah told me that's where my teacher will be. أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبَا Even if it takes me decades. I'm going to search for him. And then if you think about it, every week we read Surah, Surah Al-Kahf, the recurring letter or word in Surah Al-Kahf is what? Sabra. إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيءَ مَعِيَ صَبْرَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيءَ مَعِيَ صَبْرَ ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرَ Sabr, Sabr, Sabr is being mentioned on the tongue of Khidr to Musa alayhi salam throughout. Why? To seek knowledge, you need patience. Okay. So we need knowledge, we need dua, we need patience. To seek knowledge, which is the antidote to misconceptions, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the opening of Surah Al-Imran. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابَ Allah says, it is Allah who sent down to you, O Muhammad, the Qur'an. In it are verses that are precise. They carry just one meaning. وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ And we have other verses that we have revealed in the Qur'an that have more than one meaning. Allah says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ Allah says, as for those who have deviation in their hearts, sickness in their hearts, misconceptions in their heart, what do they do? They will follow the meaning from the verses that carry more than one meaning. And they will take a meaning that meets their desires. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? They will follow that which is unspecific, seeking discord, seeking an interpretation that's suitable to their desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ According to some of the scholars of Qur'an in Qira'ah, you shouldn't stop at 
وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله but you should join it too والراسخون في العلم meaning no one knows the true meaning that is intended from these verses that carry more than one meaning except Allah and the راسخون في العلم the people of knowledge the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught and the people of knowledge what do they say يقولون آمن نبي they say we believe in it why do they believe in it because they say the entire Quran is from one perfect source Allah Allah cannot reveal a verse with one meaning somewhere and reveal another verse with more than one meaning somewhere else. And we choose a meaning that contradicts the verses that carry one meaning. It can never be like this. We have to choose the meaning that conforms to the meaning of the verses that carry only one meaning. Because if we don't, then the Quran has a contradiction and the Quran cannot contradict itself because all these verses came from one perfect source. Subhanallah. So here we see that Allah is saying, that we test you with the Qur'an by revealing some verses that carry more than one meaning. And those who, in, in, those who intend the truth, then they interpret that mean, th they take the meaning from that verse that is true to the rest of the Qur'an. And those who want to follow their desires, they take a meaning that goes against the rest of the Qur'an. But then they justify it in their own ways and their own forms. So here Allah is teaching us about knowledge. You need knowledge, you need to understand the meanings of the verses that have one meaning and make sure you interpret the other verses of the Quran with conformity to the verses that carry only one meaning. So this is one example. This is the, the verse pertaining to knowledge. Then we have dua. Did you know, subhanallah, that the first dua in Surah Al-Imran is a dua for steadfastness? And it's right at the beginning. After this verse I just recited to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbana innaka Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmah That, oh Allah, la tuzigh qulubana, don't cause our hearts to go astray. Keep it steadfast. Ba'da idh hadaytana, after you gave it guidance and steadfastness. This is the first dua in Surah Al-Imran. Subhanallah. So, Knowledge, we find it at the beginning of Surah Al-Imran. The dua for steadfastness, which we need to maintain steadfastness, we find it at the beginning of Surah Al-Imran. Then, when we talk about knowledge again, I heard the word ilm, when the, when the, when the Huffaz were reciting. I heard the word ulul ilm, ilm meaning knowledge. Ulul ilm meaning the scholars. Ulil albab, ulil albab referring to the people of objectivity. Those who interact with revelation and they allow revelation to teach them. I heard this in Al-Imran tonight. Also, the recurring meanings of these three in the form of As-Sabr, and we spoke about patience, and Al-Ilm, we spoke about knowledge, and Dua, as we see at the beginning and the end of Al-Imran. So this is further evidence. Now, remember we said, if Baqarah is the tafsir of Al-Maghdubi alayhim, of the people of Musa, Banu Israel, and Al-Imran is the tafsir of walad the Christians, to be saved from going astray, you need Dua. You need patience upon the truth and you need knowledge. Surah Al-Imran is filled with this. Page after page, story after story, subhanallah, verse after verse. We see as if the baton is being passed between dua, between patience, between being patient upon the truth, between knowledge. And this is a recurring reality throughout the surah, subhanallah. Then we find two stories predominantly in Surah Al-Imran. The story of the misguided group, the Christians from Najran, and we don't have time to go into them, but they were the followers of Isa, the misguided group. And then Allah tells us the story of the guided group, the family of Imran, the family that were the beginnings of Isa alayhi salam. That Isa was blessed, his mother was blessed, his grandmother was blessed. Subhanallah. Allah takes us to the steadfastness of the lineage of Isa alayhi salam. That how can Isa come from a lineage of steadfastness? And the result after you see him is misguidance. Walad dalin. Dalin, we ask Allah to save us from being from the misguided. How can the result of your interaction with Musa be misguidance? When he was guidance, his mother was guided, his grandmother was guided, the family of Imran is mentioned in Surah Al-Imran and the Surah is named after it. So again, the balance between the stories. A story of misguidance and then Allah brings the story of guidance to balance the story of misguidance. Number five, regarding patience. Personally, listening to the Imams recite today, I don't think I've come across a surah that mentions patience more than Al-Imran. Haqiqatan. I think the word Sabir was used four times today. And I think only Baqarah, Wallahu alam. <laughs> when he was reciting, I was thinking, Baqarah, Sabir, we have it about four times maybe. Maybe there's a match. 
within Baqarah and Al Imran in the word Sabir. Sabir is ism fa'il. Sabir refers to the one who is patient, referring to you when you are patient. This is mentioned four times in, in Surah Al Imran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As Sabirina was Sadiqina, Wal Qanitina, Wal Munfiqina, Wal Mustaghfirina bil Ashar. He praises the people. What are the qualities that they have? The patient. First quality he mentions. The true, the obedient, and those who spend in Allah's way and those who seek forgiveness. Allah mentions patient before the rest. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And how many a prophet fought and with him fought many religious people. Righteous people. Allah says, but they never lost assurance due to what afflicted them in the cause of Allah, nor did they weaken or submit. And Allah loves as sabirin the patient. Wallahi, as, I, as, you, as the Imams were reading, I was thinking the people of Gaza must be swallowing Al Imran. Daily they must be reading the Surah. Because this is where the inspiration is. This is where the guidance is. This is where the calibration is. Their test is so severe, it, it messes up with your calibration. But Ahl Imran, Wallahi, it brings about the calibration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, We will surely test you in your possessions and we will test you in your lives. We will test you with your buildings, your money, your financial standing, your health and your life. Allah says, Allah says, and you will surely hear from those who are given the scripture before you and from those who associate others with Allah. Much abuse, they will say much abuse. Allah says, but if you are patient and fear Allah, indeed that is of the matters worthy of determination. It's what matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, think of the people of Gaza as I mentioned this. Then Allah closes Surah Al Imran with patience again. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, isbiru, persevere, wa sabiru, endure, wa rabitu, and remain patient and fear Allah that you may be successful. Subhanallah, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower patience upon the ummah and especially upon the oppressed of the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to benefit from the Qur'an and grow from the Qur'an. Wallahi, there's so much to say. But subhanallah, I repeat, we can never ever give enough time to these surahs. As we enter the third night of Ramadan, we closed off two of the largest surahs of the Qur'an. Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran, the Nahrawan. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described these two surahs. The Prophet called them Nahrawan, meaning the two bright lights. As they are both filled with blinding brightness, subhanAllah. And blinding guidance, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the family of Nahrawan. Let us recite these two surahs. Let us practice on these two surahs. It was proven in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. May Allah have mercy upon him from the narration of Abu Umam al-Bahili radiallahu an that he said that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say read the Quran for it will come on the day of resurrection to intercede for its companions meaning those who read it and read the Zahrawan the Surah Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran for they will come on the day of resurrection like two clouds or, the, or like two shades or two flocks of birds with, with their wings spread wide to give shade to those underneath it, and they will plead to Allah for those who would recite them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, read Surah Al-Baqarah, for taking recourse to it is a blessing, and giving it up is a curse, and the magicians cannot manage Surah Al-Baqarah. I leave you with these words. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum salih al-a'mal. Everything correct said is from Allah alone and He's perfect. And any mistakes are from myself and shaitan. And I seek Allah's forgiveness. Hada wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.